ready for another what I eat in a day video with all healthy whole plant food e eats. I love eats. You like the eats? Let's do some eats. What are we starting with for breakfast, Reebs? This bowl is empty. <laughs> My favorite, banana pancake. She loves the Well Your World banana pancake mix, so we are gonna jump right into breakfast, and it is our simple banana pancake mix. What is faster than this? You're about to find out how fast this is. I mean, this is like as fast as oatmeal, don't you think? Faster sometimes. It's the best when on the weekend you ask me for banana pancakes, and I'm thinking that's the easiest ask. Yes is my answer. You always say that this is like a weekend meal, and I'm like, why? It takes like no time. I don't say that. You request it as a weekend meal, and so that's what we do. There are directions on the bottle. If you've never used it before, you can like follow the directions, but you don't really need to follow the directions. You can just throw your mix into a bowl. You'll figure out how much you want when you've made too many or too few, and then you just add milk. Once you've done this a couple times, you know exactly how you want your batter as far as thickness. The thicker you make the batter, the fluffier the pancakes, the thinner, the thinner. Wow. That's <laughs> revolutionary. Pretty, that's something, isn't it? Come in close and watch me make this. It's, it's this fast. We'll even add some blueberries. Oh, yes. Okay, can you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just adding some soy milk. Simple, simple. And then you start mixing it with whisk it. The whisk is very handy for this. And you can see this is like way too thick. That is not, I can't, that doesn't look anything like pancake batter yet. And then add a little more, keep whisking. Once it starts to become like not so much friction, sort of like my oatmeal hack from that last one, then you know you're about the right thickness. There, now that is looking good. Okay, that is it. That's the batter done. It's just soy milk and our mix. Any milk. Any milk, that's true. Except dairy. Almond milk, yeah, don't use dairy. I mean, the whole this whole thing was made so that it didn't have the junk, uh, what does it usually have? The white flour, processed sugar, all that stuff. We use eggs. date powder for the sugar. Usually the eggs are added. I know a lot of people ask if that's gluten-free. Well, I don't have a gluten-free certification, so I technically can't say I'm certified gluten-free, but I do use a certified gluten-free oat flour in this mix because oat flour is off cross-contaminated with gluten. And the other question I often get with this is about the baking powder, because normally baking powder is very salty and all of our products don't have any added salt. So we use a sodium-free baking powder, which is really great and it works really well. I'll show you. Rinse your whisk before it gets crusty. Probably service announcement. In my opinion, doing pancakes of any kind without oil, you really need this nonstick griddle. If you look closely, the surface is like almost porous, not porous, but it's like very rigid so nothing sticks to it. It's a magical surface. It's truly nonstick. Even doing these pancakes, you could use a nonstick pan. They're not great. The, the griddle is amazing. And these things are only like 30 bucks. Oh yeah, Reebs likes her pancakes like this size. I'm a silver dollar She's gal. A, she likes the silver dollar. I like a hand pancake. I like to take my pancakes for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I eat them on the go. You know, a lot of people use our batter for other creative things like muffins and cookies. A lot of people email in saying, hey, did you ever think of this? This is what I use it for. And there are a lot of people doing innovative things with our products. So that's pretty cool. Okay, one more little one there. I could fit another little one right there. This scale. And that's it. So I made like the perfect little one griddle amount. Pretty much as soon as you get them down, they're ready to flip. You don't have to wait for a bunch of uh, dots. See, that's Whoa. like a nice color right there. You don't have to wait for the bubbles is what I meant to say. This griddle is awesome. I have it on 350 degrees. That's like the, oh, that one I put on later. Dang it, <laughs> mess that one up. You gotta kind of go in order when you're flipping. Let's keep a flipping. If that one feeling, was a little early. If you're feeling really naughty, you could add some chocolate chips. Oh, I forgot to add the blueberries. Why don't you make a compote? Ooh, I'll make a compote instead. I jumped the gun, I flipped a little fast, but you can go as brown or not brown as you want. That one's gonna be perpetually messed up. Don't get the ugly ones in the video that I messed up. If I was gonna do blueberries, I would have just, right after I put the batter down on the griddle, drop some blueberries on. Like in a smiley face design? Heck yeah. I used to make a Mickey Mouse pancake too. I don't know how you compote, but I compote just like this. A bag of frozen berries. This is the, the bag you can get from Costco for pretty cheap, organic berries. Just throw some in. The strawberries are a little big for this, okay? So get the blackberry, <laughs> the blackberries and the blueberries work the best. And then you could add just a splash of water. My kettle's empty, so that's fun. I've got it on high. They melt pretty fast. You can smash them a little with a masher if you wanted. I added a little too much water, you guys. Just 
don't worry about it. Maybe I'll throw in more fruit to reduce it instead. Or you can just let this boil and it will thicken up real nice and that can be your syrup. Pretty easy, huh? Oh, and if you want it sweeter, you could add a little bit of date powder. Here's the Well Your World date powder. This just adds a little more sweetness to it. Now you have a healthy whole food syrup. Wow, look at that. Nice, thick, syrupy whole fruit. Mm -mm. What's better than that? Well, she wanted a sort of Mickey Mouse with a smashed little pig nose, <laughs> but close enough. Are you ready for some compote? Yeah. This is so easy. I think if I were doing it for me, I would just dip. I like the pancake as a hand food, <laughs> but you're more of a fork and knife food person. Whoa. There you go. And that added, what, three minutes to the entire meal? This was the easiest thing to add. I love these pancakes. It's a nice warm compote. Party and filling. I kind of like a little bit liquidy compote. Melts the pancake a little bit for you. That's really delicious. But Sweet. I love berries. <laughs> and these are really filling. This has been a healthy whole plant food breakfast. We'll see you at lunch. See you at lunch. Oh, do I have an appetite? It is lunchtime. What's for lunch, Reeves? Stuffed pepper soup. I haven't made this one in a little while, which is not cool. Printed it out, it's gonna go on the pantry. You know how we do that. But this is a really simple recipe. You know I'm all about really fast, easy. That's what makes our plant-based YouTube channel, I think, different from others, is it's all about fast, simple, take out all that complication. You know what I mean? There are a few different ways you can do this. If you're a food purist, then you can use fresh produce. You can chop up your onion and your bell pepper, or you can speed things along. You can use the frozen bagged onion or bell pepper. That's really handy. Also, this dish calls for some cooked rice and lentils, so we often will make uh, big batches of lentils and rice to have in the fridge for our meals throughout the week because it's just so easy to make them. If you don't even want to do that, you can use the frozen bagged rice, canned lentils, and then there's absolutely no preparation needed for this recipe at all, and no chopping. So Still, there you but go. But did you tell them the most important part is that they don't actually have to stuff a pepper. You don't have to stuff a pepper. This recipe just in and of itself is a simplification over the traditional stuffed pepper, which we do have in our uh, cookbook, and I love stuffed peppers. They're fantastic, but they are a little bit of extra work. Why not just get all those delicious flavors for your like during the week meals, and you don't have to fancy it up so much at every meal. I'm all about that. The other thing you may notice is that I have the pot sitting right here next to the cutting board. Oh my gosh, you're not gonna put the veggies into a preheated pot so that you can properly saute them for the minimum number of minutes to make this recipe delight? No. You don't need to do any of that. You can saute with the spices and all that and then add the tomatoes, blah, blah, blah. This is all dump and go. Put it in, heat it up, eat it. You know what I mean? So I didn't have the uh, frozen bell peppers diced up and I like chopping, so I don't mind a little bit of prep. It tastes exactly like a stuffed pepper, so <laughs> I'm never stuffing a pepper again. Oh no, you make some really good chili rellenos though. Oh, that's different. Is it? Okay, yeah. good. Okay, so I'm not gonna miss out on all stuffed peppers. Okay, a lot of people write in asking what kind of Dutch oven you use? It doesn't really matter. I have a couple different sizes. Like sometimes this one's a little too small. This happens to be a Cuisinart, but like get whatever you can get at TJ Maxx on the cheap. We have one in our gear link down below. You can check out all of our gear that we like to use uh, and you can get it on Amazon real fast. This is an enameled Dutch oven. You know, it's a little bit more non-stick, but the enamel like lasts unlike a lot of non-stick. Plus I don't really care about the non-stickiness of it, but they're really easy to clean and I love Dutch ovens. They, they heat really uniform throughout so it's really good for these big one pot meals mm -hmm. so there's one pepper we're gonna do one more two bell peppers so that would be like two bags of the diced frozen bell pepper that you can get at Walmart for example not everybody has the same options here's a bag of chopped onions from Walmart this one was getting a little bit old in the freezer so I wanted to use it up why not? Even if it's got a little freezer burn, no big deal. You're not gonna notice. We've got these cooked lentils. This is just the regular brown lentils, are they called? I, whatever. Are they brown or green? I don't know anymore. I cooked it like pasta, just like you showed me though. Yes, I love to cook my lentils just like pasta. Pretty much all things I cook like pasta. So I threw in a couple cups, measured 
cooked. So if you use a can, a can's like a cup and a half. It's pretty close. You could do more if you want, no big deal. Same with the rice. Reeb's made some Instant Pot brown rice today. You don't really have to measure, you guys. So it, it came <laughs> out looking like an Instant long? Pot. Yeah, but it didn't get mushy. It's perfectly fine. You can break it up. Once you add the liquid to the soup, it'll all break up. Maybe a little bit more, and that's about two cups of rice. Some tomatoes. Try to get the no salt added. Just like these lentils were no salt added, try to get no salt added tomatoes. We've got a couple cans of tomato sauce and a can of diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Please rinse and recycle. Let's add some flavor. By the way, all the recipes for these What I Eat videos are down below in the description box. Click the link, get the recipe, boom. It's gonna be a couple tablespoons of Italian seasoning. That's the most common stuffed bell pepper type of flavor, I feel like. But we like to change it up from time to time, so I'll often make it kind of jambalaya style with our voodoo seasoning, or Mexican style with our fiesta seasoning. Nice. Really, really good, great options. That voodoo, ooh, that would be so good. A little crushed red pepper, gotta have a little bit of heat. Yeah, baby. <laughs> You're just measuring it Dylan style. Uh, well, you know, that's what you gotta do. A little garlic, a couple teaspoons of garlic, whatever. <laughs> couple teaspoons? You have like a quarter cup in your hand. No, no, it's the camera adds 10 pounds. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> we have the world's greatest non-fortified nutritional yeast at the best price on our website. Free shipping at 50 bucks. Throw in some nooch. I know you can get it anywhere, but ours is the best. Okay, that's pretty much it. We're gonna throw in some veggies. Oh boy. Wow, the container came right apart. I was about to yell at Reeves for not screwing the lid on, but that's not what happened. <laughs> a couple cups worth. You're just gonna add enough veggie sock to get to your desired consistency. So when we go to the stove, we'll add more. Don't let La Cordon Bleu see this video. <laughs> the cooking school? Yeah. <laughs> Now that I've stained this one with blueberries, let's keep it going. I'll have you know, by the way, that I get emails all the time, people saying, Dylan, you say you're not a chef. Boy, you're a chef, mister. I actually am not, just so we're clear, but thank you for the lovely compliment. You don't have to be a chef to eat this way. Look at this meal I just made. Like Reeves said, any chef would be offended by this meal, and that's when you know you're doing it right. If you want it stewy and thick like that, great. Just let it heat up and cook everything through. Obviously, the rice and lentils are cooked. We need to cook the bell pepper, the onion, maybe just let it cook for five minutes. If you want it a little soupier, no problem. Just add a little bit more veggie stock or water. It's fine. It doesn't have to be veggie stock. And then you can get wild. I mean, what else could you throw in here? You could put in some chopped mushrooms if you want to. Oh yeah. You could throw in some black beans instead of the lentils on one day or another just to change it up and keep it fresh. I'm not a really good cook and I would be confused. Do you cook it uncovered or covered? Well, if you want to get it up to a boil faster, then cover it because you'll lose less heat out the pot. But you don't really need it covered like now while you're cooking it because it cooks really fast. It is hot. All we got to do is let it cook for a few minutes to soften our veggies because we didn't saute them first. And boom, you are done. I know you're gonna ask me if you can do this in the Instant Pot. My answer is yes. You can do pretty much anything in the Instant Pot. This would just take like, what, one, two minutes on high pressure in the Instant Pot? Assuming you're using already cooked rice and lentils. If you were gonna cook the rice and lentils from scratch, then you'd need to add more water and then cook it for longer, like 20 minutes. I don't know the calculations for that off the top of my head, so you'd have to experiment a little bit. Totally SOS free, can you believe it? No added salt, oil, sugar, but this is a tomato soup. So a really nice thing I like to do for tomato soups, it's optional, is throw in a little bit of date powder. It just cuts the acidity from the tomatoes and gives it a little bit of a neutral flavor. Now is when you could put it on low and you could cover it and you could just let it cook for a few minutes. Oh, I'm ready to eat. Mm -mm -mm. And this makes like a nice, good sized pot. And how much was this? Like almost free. It's just a couple cans of tomatoes, some lentils, rice. This is the cheapest way to eat on the planet. It's delicious. It keeps you healthy so that you can do all of the fun things in life that don't involve food. Mm. I was all about don't get tomatoes that have the added salt. There's so much salt in canned tomatoes normally. This is when you would add the salt if you're a salt person. You just take a little sprinkle. That's way less salt than you would get if you were using salty tomatoes, salty canned lentils, stuff like that. And now you have complete control over your salt intake. You know, a lot of people think that because we sell totally no salt added products, that means that I'm like really super religious about not having any salt in my diet. That's not the case. But all the packaged food products out in the world have just such an extreme amount of salt. Salt. It's important to me that you add the salt yourself if you are a salt person. Mm. Oh boy, it is hot as you can imagine. Mm. <laughs> this is so, so good. This is like a blank canvas. Mm. Mm. 
It's delicious, it's hearty, it's filling, it gives you tons of energy. This is the best food, and it doesn't give you a heart attack. But does it taste like a stuffed bell pepper? It absolutely tastes like a stuffed bell pepper. We better turn the camera off, because I'm about to embarrass myself with the way I'm gonna eat this. So we'll come back at dinner, how about that? Sounds good. We are making a taquito of samosa, an even easier way than the beautiful little pastry that we all know and love. I am chopping an onion. I've got my trusty pan here. Is it all heated up and ready to No, as you can see, it is not heated up. I am now chopping one onion. You could use the frozen onion for this as well, like we did in the stuffed pepper soup. Are you hungry? Because you ate like five bowls of stuffed pepper soup. I'm always hungry. I'm always ready for another new and exciting meal. I'm like Luca, always ready to eat. Midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., anytime. <laughs> ready to eat. Normally with this one, I would also shred or chop a carrot, but I'm gonna use this bag of frozen peas and carrots. There are a little less carrots in there than I'd like, but it's close enough. It wasn't quite the whole thing. It was maybe like 10 or 12 ounces of frozen peas and carrots. Let's throw in some cheater garlic, the ultimate time-saving garlic. Don't be afraid to use it. Don't be an elitist about your garlic. Of course, enjoy fresh garlic from time to time, but when you're cooking every meal for yourself, you're gonna need to save some time once in a while, am I right? Let's go to the stove. It's an all day long spoon. We got it on high heat, the sizzle sizzle. I've got my busted tank of veggie broth here, so I might as well use it. Just to keep it from sticking, we don't cook with oil. You don't need all of that. It makes everything hard to clean, and imagine what it does to the inside of your body, just the same. Look at that, that looks like a beautiful ratio of peas, carrots, and onions, I love it. Now I've got some curry powder. This is a samosa after all. Teaspoon or two of curry powder, that's With about Dylan's a- measuring. That's about a teaspoon or two, don't get carried away. Some cumin, or cumin, whatever you wanna call it. Maybe throw in a half a teaspoon or so of that. You could put in other Indian spices, you could do coriander, you could do anything you want. Just go for it. A little onion powder. There we go. And let's put in some hot paprika. You could use smoky or a sweet paprika with some crushed red pepper, but I'm just gonna use this hot stuff. Look at that, hot Hungarian style paprika. Works for me. Get it in there, mm-mm-mm. And then we need a little juice. Whoa, you ate a lot of soup. Yeah, I sure did. You can hear it when it starts to dry out a little bit and you gotta add a little juice. You don't want it to stick and burn. If you want it to be a little tomato-y, you can put in a little tomato sauce, but this is all I need. And we'll grind in some black pepper as well. I'll just reduce the heat. Now let's go talk about potatoes, come on. If you were gonna do this from scratch, maybe peel the potatoes, maybe you don't. Dice up some potatoes and boil them so we have cooked potatoes to make into this tasty filling. But I've already got cooked potatoes. We often do have cooked potatoes in the fridge that we can make fries out of, in the air fryer, you name it. I'm just gonna leave the skin on, beautiful russets, ready to go, mash them up. We'll mix all this together and we'll see where we are. That looks about like the right amount of potato too for this. You know, we saved a lot of time today by having batch cooked ingredients in the fridge. And we aren't always good about that, but we were this week, and so maybe this will teach us to keep doing that. Some people like to do big batch recipe prep or other ingredients. I really only do it with my starches. I mean, it's of course whatever works for you. I got no problem with people doing something that saves them time, but I just often don't think of it from a recipe perspective. I think of it more from an ingredient perspective. And then I just decide what I'm gonna eat the day of. So this is nice and smashed, and I think what I'll do is just throw it right into the pan on the stove, add as much veggie stock as I might need, and I think this is gonna make it a really nice creamy filling. What do you think, Reebs? Yeah, that's perfect, because they're cold from being in the fridge, so that'll warm it up. Good point, good point. Let's throw it in. I'm just going for it. If it's not the right amount, whatever. We'll just have to figure that out when it happens. If anything, you could add a little more potato. I think the amount's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna add a little bit more juice. We're like almost out of this veggie stock, which is perfect. With a weird no lid. Yeah. Let this kind of come together and get creamy. This looks like the perfect ratio. Add a little turmeric. Ooh, turmeric definitely needs to go in here. Goodness. Just a little. Stir it all in. Everything's pretty well heated through, so these taquitos will cook really nice and quickly in the oven. It's time to stuff. What do you say, Reeves? Heck yeah. This is like my favorite now with the frozen peas and carrots from Winco. Genius. You know, I sound like a broken record, but everything we make, I say, oh, Luca would love that too. <laughs> he, he really would. He loves this kind of, just this filling by itself would be the perfect meal for him. And we'll do a full taste test of all the meals with him. Still, don't you forget to warm 
those tortillas because last time you made taquitos, you were embarrassed. But here's the thing. These ones are fresh made. Look at them. I didn't put them in the fridge. If I'd put them in the fridge last night when I bought them from the store, I got these at the Latin market, they'd be all hard and they would definitely need, but this is, they're ready, Reebs. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> you don't believe me? No. You're putting me on the spot here. I'll warm up a couple, yeah. but I'm gonna test these ones not heated up because I need to be proven right. Just like this? An actual napkin. Okay, so you wrap it in a cloth napkin and microwave for how long? You know, 30 seconds. Cast your vote now in the comments below. <laughs> and now we'll put these away for next time. But try out the oven fries. These are the not heated up, these are the heated up. Let's do the hot ones first. And we're just gonna take a bit of filling and then roll them up. Put them seam side down. I'm throwing them right on this little little rack. You could put it on a parchment line, baking sheet, whatever. You know what? The texture of these hot ones is pretty nice. They're malleable. They're very malleable. You got the blue corn <clears throat> today. I did. I've never seen the blue corn. At the Latin market, they have this huge tortilla maker on the other side of the counter. So you can like watch the tortillas being made. It's pretty cool. I think you might be right. Maybe I should heat these up. I mean, if I am right, you can just make me dinner. Reebs, uh, what's going on here? Uh, why is that splitting? You oh. told me it wouldn't split. We gotta get these in. We gotta go. We gotta go. We need to eat. I hope they don't all split. They might all split. We're still learning about tortillas, apparently. Oh no, we forgot a step. Let's let it heat up. This is one of my favorite steps. How it's, could you forget? It's Indian. Oh boy. That's <gasps> just, uh, it's we, just uh, we, we need a new tortilla. We can't let it be like that. Put a toothpick in that one. A toothpick? You might ruin the two next to it. What is this, the cordon bleu? The cordon bleu? It's le cordon bleu. Oh, sorry. Okay. This is surgery, taquito surgery. Hey, split happens. <laughs> We need a little lemony flavor on these. You could have put it in your filling, or you could do this really crazy thing and squirt on a little lemon juice Ooh. right on top. Make a nice little wet surface, and then take that Well Your World delicious chili lime. Mm -mm, don't worry, it's not spicy. And sprinkle on just a touch of chili lime on top. It makes them pretty, and it makes them taste even better. Why not? Now we can go in, off we go. Okay. We'll see you soon. Oh, it's time. Oh, a little a little splitting there, Reeb, oh. but not much, oh, not okay. bad. Who needs to be embarrassed, me or you? Oh, those look good. Let's see, are they nice and, oh, they're gonna be nice and crunchy. Oh, the thing about these taquitos is you do need to eat them right out of the oven if you want them to stay crunchy. They will soften a little bit after whatever, 10 minutes, and then you can just throw them in again and they'll crunch back up. Don't be afraid of that. You got all your starches, potatoes, carrots, peas, the tortilla. We should dip it in some Indian sauce, in my opinion. Mm. <laughs> mm. You do need a minute to cool. <sighs> Even for you? Mm hmm. A little Well Your World Indian sauce. Starch wrapped in a tortilla chip. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't need much, just a little dip. Mmm. <sighs> Hold sauce or that hot filling. You could warm up the sauce if you wanted. No, I love it like that. This is truly delicious and underrated meal. This should be eaten in this family more often. <laughs> I'm glad that we made this video because I felt that way about the stuffed pepper soup too. That one slipped through the cracks. Recipe yeah. amnesia. Recipe amnesia is real. Don't get caught up thinking that every meal, every dinner has to look like some sort of standard American plate where you've got a main dish and a bunch of sides all around it. A soup course, this... a salad course. Well, yeah, that's a good example too. You can just eat this as a meal. Don't be afraid to eat simple food. This is a very well-rounded meal. There's lots of tasty ingredients, herbs and spices, all kinds of stuff in here. You wanna have a, some fresh greens and stuff with it to feel like you wanna get even more well-rounded, sure. But you can also do that at a different meal during the day or a different day altogether. You don't have to have the perfect variety of foods every single day. This is perfectly adequate. I love it, it's wonderful. No changes. When you make simple recipes with simple ingredients, you don't have to worry about going and shopping specifically for recipes because it's just your weekly rotation list. Get in here, you better try this. It smells like Indian food in here because I went outside to take out the garbage and I came back in and I was like, ooh, it smells delicious. I smell, probably smelling it in the office too. Yeah. Whoa. I can hear that crunch. This tastes like it should be naughty because it's so delicious, but it's really, really healthy. What do you think of the chili lime on top? Oh, it's perfect. And usually we sprinkle some salt on our food like Dylan did at lunch, but this doesn't have any and it's so good. Y'all, this is how we really eat in this household. Our simple recipes on YouTube take all the complexity out of your plant-based diet. So check out more just like this one and we'll see you on the next video. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Bye.